The most obvious winner from the COVID-19 lockdown, Zoom Video Communications, but it's had a pretty tough week. Thanks to the terrific video conferencing software that many of us use, Zoom has become the face of the stay-at-home economy. They were averaging 10 million daily users toward the end of last week. In March, they averaged 200 million. And that's huge. It's no wonder the stock caught on fire rallying from 87 when we spoke to the CEO two months ago, all the way to 165 at its highs a couple of weeks ago. Since then, those Zooms come under increased scrutiny, and the stock's given back a big chunk, falling to around 123 as of today. Journalists, security researchers, even some regulators have pointed out security flaws. And they got a new competitor in Ring Central, and they're losing some key clients. Clients like New York schools. What do we do with this stock that's going from market darling to battleground in a matter of days? You know what we need to do? We need to get some clarity. So let's ch- check in with Eric Yuan. He's the founder and chairman and CEO of Zoom Video to get a better sense of these concerns and find out what he's doing to win back his customers' trust. Mr. Yuan, welcome back to Mad Money. Hey, Jim. Thank you for having me. I really oh. appreciate it. Oh, of course, Eric. And it's been, you've been a delight. You've always come on, and you're not willing to duck during periods when I know it's been difficult. Now, you yourself have said, sir, that you, you can't afford to have this happen again. You can't afford to lose people's trust. So what have you done to make sure that doesn't happen? Yes, that's a great question, Jim. So when we built a Zoom, you know, Zoom was built for serving a lot of enterprise and business customers. But over the past several weeks, we had a lot of brand new users, new user cases. This is never, you know, expected. By those, you know, when we're working together with the enterprise IT team, normally it takes some time to build a trust. This this time, you know, a lot of first time, you know, in the users, you know, they heard about Zoom, they started using Zoom, and we need to, you know, spend time on that, right? Make sure right. you know really have a customer really understand Zoom the security settings. And however, you know, when they read some article, if they did not enforce the password. They probably feel very frustrated. You know, we needed to enforce the security settings, private settings, for the first time in the users. Well, have you gone back to some uh, New York school system and say, and said, listen, we have fixed it. You should come back to us. Uh, don't go to Microsoft Teams. We, we've got the superior product, and all your kids love it. So you are right. We are still the process to work together with them. You know, over the past several days, God has some meetings. Their concern is, you know, there are so many schools and Zoom, they are working together with us directly. They want to have a master account to manage all those public schools, to make sure every public schools and we have a security control. Actually, over the past two weeks, we already enforced password, waiting room, you know, for those schools by default. I think we are seeing the process. Okay, now uh, we had uh, Chuck Robbins on last week. We also had Ring Central on. Obviously, they want your business. Uh, Chuck did mention that, uh, and you know Cisco well, of course, that, that WebEx does have uh, does have better security. Now, that's a heavy enterprise product. Yours was an enterprise product, but it's now being blown out by everybody. Can you um, risk having uh, this weaker uh, security than Chuck when it comes to the big enterprise customers? So prior to this crisis, we have lots of enterprise customers, right? right. Speaking about security, you know, I, I build a WebEx. I know that very well. A lot of people challenge us, a lot of end-to-end encryption. I'm in this industry for more than 20 years. You look at the Cisco by default, Microsoft by default, neither of them all for the end-to-end encryption. Because to support end-to-end encryption, you cannot have a, you know PSD and phone users dial in. Mm-hmm. You cannot support a traditional video endpoint. You cannot support the cloud recording, right? I think from a security perspective, I really do not think any big difference. Big difference. I do not think they are better. Unfortunately, we suddenly become so popular. Well, and that you know, yeah, I, I gotta disagree with you, Eric. Uh, Cisco does not route traffic through China. Uh, a lot of companies and a lot of individuals do not want our traffic. I'm not talking about our Zoom cocktail party Saturday, but we don't want our traffic through China. Is there like a box we can check that just says, listen, Chinese servers will not have our information? Because that Cisco doesn't do. So that is a big difference. You are, you are right. So I want to share, take a step back to, to share with you. But by the way, on Wednesday, I have a weekly uh, Zoom uh, uh, security webinar. I'm going to explain it in very, very you know, de- uh, details. And... So because, you know, this is a, we have a global distributed meeting center. And by design, if you and I have a meeting here, the traffic should never go to China at all. Right. However, you know, because uh, the misconfiguration in the extremely rare cases, and you know, you and I probably try to go through our data center, either in AWS China or our Tesla infrastructure, you know, part of the Tesla in China, go through our, you know, our data center and come back. 
you know, just extremely rare cases. Eh? We are going to share everything open transparently. You know, who's meeting and, uh, you know, routed back to there. Again, that's our data center. The right. session key also in the memory. So that's, you know, to have the, you know, the global distributed meeting architecture, I think we, we can do it that very well. However, this is more like this time is uh, uh, missed steps. Okay, missed steps. Fair enough. Now, uh, this Zoom bombing. I like the fact that Zoom is a household term, and we do all use it. And yeah, I, I was hesitant to be as critical as others because I am on this product five times a day, and I never even used it until Jensen Wong told me about it when we were at NVIDIA. But I also know that there's been this Zoom bombing. It has not happened to me in any of my groups. But is there, can we stop the Zoom bombing? Can we out these people? Can you, can you make it so that they don't wreck uh, what is, you know, you, 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 with terrible, terrible uh, insults and, and miserable things that you and I both would never, never want to have happen to us. Jimmy, you're right. I've been using Zoom for almost nine years, every day, probably 10 meetings. I never saw that. And the reason why is it's still, when you're working together with the first time users, we already enforced security settings. Enable your password, waiting room, don't share your meeting invitation link to others. And after you are in the meeting, lock the meeting. And we have a lot of features built in, right? As long as, you know, we you kind of go further step in front of those security settings. Plus, any user learn a little bit, of, little bit more about our best practice, I think it should be okay. And you think that the people will, will convert from free to paid when it's time? Uh, that's not our focus. Because we really want to go back to serve our large enterprise okay. business customers, right? This is a totally different game. We, we want to help the world. That's why we... We're doing that now. And one last question. Do you need a belt and suspender situation? Should you bring in somebody like a crowd strike? A, 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 it's some sort of uh, cybersecurity that everybody says, well, it's not, it's not just Eric. He's, got, he's really got this thing buttoned down. You are right on. Tomorrow, we're going to announce that. You know, you see the Zoom, you know, you know the CISO and uh, the wise, uh, the board and the CISO and the council. A lot of our customers, you know, their chief security information officer, they all want to help us. We yes. know they work together with us for many years. They trust us. I totally agree. Look, I, I know you can fix this. You have made a commitment to fix it, and I know you. You will fix it. And I want to thank you for coming on. You could have ducked. You could have said, listen, Jim, I'm not coming on, but you came right on. And I want to thank Eric Yuan, who's founder and CEO of Zoom. Eric Yuan has did not have to come on. I sent him an email. I said, why not come on? Boom, he comes right on. Everybody's back into the break. Thank you, Eric. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.